Hi, this is Melissa with Web of Creativity, and today I'm going to share with you the uh, my newest album, which is called Accordion 4x6 Mini. This uses uh, the Graphic 45 uh, Raining Cats and Dogs paper collection. And I'm going to go ahead and show you this album and then go straight into a tutorial. Um, the tutorial is going to be using the um, Christmas collection from Graphic 45. I don't have the front cover of it, but here's a Tis the Night Before Christmas collection. I'm gonna have I'm um, gonna list all the materials on here and on my blog and have written directions on my blog, which is www.webofcreativity.net. This is all free, so I'm doing a free tutorial with all the directions and dimensions. And again, the written part is on my blog. So we're gonna start off by showing you this. There's an elastic band. This is um, Tim Holtz electric uh, electric sorry elastic loop. See the back. Opens up. And we start off with a pocket first with a couple of tags. Um, the pocket is magnetic. It's, uh, there's a magnet to keep it closed so these tags don't fall out when they're upside down. And this part, the bottom part, is uh, an accordion. So you can either open it one flap at a time. Or all of them at once. Alright, it's uh, simple, easy, quick. Um, and this uses lightweight chipboard. This isn't uh, heavyweight chipboard. And with the lightweight chipboard, you can score it. It's bendable. Uh, it's perfect for this project. And of course, you can um, plenty of room for pictures. So this can expand more. You can put more than two tags in here. I just made a couple of tags. Uh, the material list: one piece of eight by eight and a half by eleven lightweight chipboard uh, card stock. I'm going to break the cardstock down. Um, this is uh, a 12 by 12 French vanilla that I'm using for the Christmas collection, but I used 8.5 by 11 black cardstock for this pet one. Um, you'll need uh, three sheets of 8.5 by 11 cardstock for the pages. Uh, one eight and a half by eleven cardstock for the pocket, and um, one eight and a half by eleven for the tags. Then one elastic loop, and I've used um, I use basic gray magnets, but you can use whatever you have available to you. This is um, basic gray. This is one fourth inch. Uh, you'll need two of those, and that's for the pocket area. And then you'll have uh, the larger ones, which is um, half an inch. And you'll need three of those. And oh, um, the paper uh, nine sheets of 12 by 12 pattern paper. 9 to 10. This one has 9. I'm using 10 for the Christmas collection. So it depends on what cutouts that you have um, and if you don't want to double up your sheets. So 9 to 10 pieces of 12 by 12 pattern paper. Uh, 8 by 8 will fit, will work. 8 by 8 pad of paper will work perfect for this as well. Alright, we're going to start with 
cutting this down. So we are going to cut our lightweight chipboard to 10 and 1 fourth by 7 inches. I'm going to start with my 7 inch mark. going to score it. This is a little tougher to score. Um, you just have to press down a little harder on it. So we're going to score this. I have in your paper at the um, 10 and 1 fourth mark along the top edge. And we're going to score it at 5 inches, 5 and 1 eighth inches, and 5 and 1 fourth inches. So I'm going to turn this a little bit. So we have three score lines. My lighting's a little off, so hopefully you can see that. Uh, these are a little hard to bend, so I get my bone folder out and a ruler uh, with a straight edge to hold the score line. So I'll put the ruler up to the middle score line hold it pretty tight and take my bone folder to go under the paper and run it pressing hard on your ruler because this will slide. Now you go to the one on the furthest right and do it again. Turn it over and do that to the last score line. And my ruler slid. All right, so that gets my bend. lined up good yes um we're gonna go ahead and crop the quarters um one fourth inch corner chomper is what i have uh we are memory keepers crop a dial and we're gonna go ahead and ink this for the Raining Cats and Dogs, I inked with black soot around all the edges. With this one, I'm going to use Antique Linen um, from Tim Holtz Distress Line. And I'm going to ink the inside of it also. I'm going to 
going to turn it inside out just a little bit to get some ink on the inside crease. There we go. Fold it back to get my crease back. going to start with the cover first and I already cut out some pieces for my cover this paper is the jolly old elf paper and I cut out some of the a small clock, medium size, and the uh, medium size clock with the with the Santa. The big version is just too big for the the front album. I used uh, circle dies, um, nesting dies, to get a good cut circle around it because I'm not that great at fussy cutting. So you can fussy cut that out if you want but I cheated and then I cut this strip out of the paper collection too. So the cover piece, let me look at my directions, we'll need two six and three-fourths by four and three-fourths. Again, six and three fourths by four and three fourths. Now, on the uh, trimming the corners, I'm only going to crop the bottom two on here. Go ahead and ink the edges. Linen is a very light color. Um, I chose to go light. Uh, vintage photo would probably be a good one. It goes really good with graphic 45 paper. And of course it's optional. You don't have to ink your edges. Using score tape, one fourth inch.
going to, um, besides just adding the tape, I'm going to use my ATG um, advanced tape glider and put some additional tape on here and then tape it down. Let me get I use my craft knife to get the tape backing off because it's a lot faster. So let me get my ATG. Right. I'm going to go ahead and get this attached. Now we're going to move on to the inside. I think we'll make our pages first. We're going to move on to the pages. So we're going to make this accordion page. If um, you can use uh, Eight and a half by eleven or twelve by twelve. I'm going to use twelve by twelve French vanilla for this um, Christmas version. I used eight and a half by eleven black for the pet version. You need to cut your cardstock down to. You'll need two six and three fourths by ten inches and one six and three fourths by five and one fourth. I will repeat that. So first we'll need two six and three fourths by ten. And then one six and three fourths by five and one fourth. So if you're using 12 by 12, the extra sheet is five and one fourth, so it's perfect. By six and three fourth. going to score the six and three fourths by ten. We're going to score that a half an inch and at five and one fourth. And it'll be on the long side, the ten inch side. So a half an inch and five and one fourth. Uh, 
And then the six and three fourth by uh, five and one fourth. We'll put it on the five and one fourth side and we'll score it out a half an inch. This is a little hard to see. Let's see if I can put my cutting mat down. See if you can see that a little bit better. We're going to fold at the half inch mark. taper the corners by cutting them at an angle from the score line. I'm going to do that to all three pieces. So we'll fold on the half an inch taper with the corners. From the, we need tape. <laughs> need tape to attach them. So on the half an inch new tab, I'm going to go ahead and add tape to it, to all three pieces. So this one will be attached to the book and we're going to fold this piece, the first piece up. Give it a good crease. The second piece, which is the long piece, we're going to attach the top of this tab to the top of this, to the first page. So I'm going to take the tape off. line it up. I'm going to turn it upside down to do that. I'm going to line it up and fold up. Got it a little crooked. All right. Give it a crease, and then the third one is going to attach at the top of the second page. upside down so I can see it. Okay. 
And that's our accordion with the tab at the top. All right. I'm going to, uh, before I attach this, I'm going to go ahead and ink this. Um, ink the edges on this one. This is the antique linen, as we did with the paper. This, of course, is an optional step. You don't have to ink your edges. I'm going to also ink at uh, in the middle where it folds. And I'm going to flip it over and do it again on the other side. Right. All right, now we're going to attach the pages to the book. Pages are going to go on the bottom half. I'm just going to see you lining it up. That looks good. Remove the tape backing. Turn this upside down again so I can see it. <laughs> All right. There we go. Flip this up. And then run my bone folder across it and give it a good stick. 
All right, I should probably do that to the pages. Okay. Looking good. All right, we're going to do the do the pocket next. The pocket is going to be, um, let's see, four and three fourths by seven and three fourths. Get out my cutter. Right. Four and three fourths. By seven and three fourths. Score it. Um, on the four and three fourths, going that way, we're going to go ahead and do uh, a half an inch. Then we're going to turn it the long way, do a half an inch, flip it all the way around so it's still the long way, and do a half an inch. So only three sides are a half an inch. We're going to go ahead and fold on the score line on all three of them. And run the bone folder across it to give it a good stick. Oops. And cut our corners. On the bottom corners, it's still tapering. You see the line, where the lines are. And then you just trim like the corner's not there. So you're just tapering it off. There you go. And go ahead and add tape to this. And then we'll put in our thumb notch which is also an optional piece. You do not have to do that. All right, there's several ways to do a thumb notch. Of course, there's punches with uh, that's small or you can do a handheld punch. What I'm using is circle dies. The larger one is for the paper. The smaller one is for the pocket. You just place it in the center at the halfway point which I'm going to measure. Oh, the circle is two inches. So I'll measure in the middle from my center point first. And then mark where my two inches are going to be. All right. That's where I'm going to cut it. Be right back.
right, there we go. Um, we're going to go ahead and ink this before we attach it. I think my ink pad is drying out just a bit. Attach it to the top just like so. All right, I like to take the bottom piece off first. Bottom tape off and then just fold the side onto it. I'm just running my bone folder over it to give it a good stick. There we go. Alright, uh, moving on, we're going to go ahead and cut out our uh, mats. We're going to do our first mat first on the back to uh, attach our elastic band on there. Uh, and then we'll cut out the rest of the mats. The mat, the one on the back is a different size than all the ones on the sheets, just by a little bit. And then we'll mat the front cover, uh, front pocket. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and mat this back piece right there. So you wanna pick out the pattern paper that you're gonna use. And that back cover is six and three fourths by four and five eighths. So if your paper has, um, if it has lines or, or stripes or design on it, this it's going to be six and three fourths this way, and four and five eighths this way. To, before I ink this, I'm going to trim the corners on the bottom of this with one and four, uh, a fourth of an inch corner rounder.
before we attach this, we are going to attach our magnet to the back. It's going to be a half inch magnet. I'm I want it one and a half inches down and centered. I'm going to go ahead and mark the Tim Holtz ruler is one and a half inches long uh, in width. So I'm just going to find the center, which is three and a half inches. Good mark. That's where I'm going to put it. Uh, these magnets are basic gray and have a sticker on the back. So I'm just going to peel off the sticker. There we go. And then to secure it a little bit more, I'm going to add a piece of tape. I'm using a half an inch score tape. Run my fingernails around the sides of the magnet to get it a good stick. Then I'm going to remove the tape back in. And then it ready to attach my back sheet. Before I attach it, I'm going to go ahead and add a little more adhesive from my ATG. And go ahead and attach centered. That's going to be about one eighth of an inch on all sides. And then I'm going to run my bone folder over the magnet area and then the whole thing. All right, our placement for our elastic band, our elastic loop, and get one out is going to be, I'm going to measure it. Let's see. This looks like it's about one and a half inches up center. So I'm going to do the same thing with my ruler. Now you don't want your magnet placement, the reason why it's not in the center uh, is because this loop is magnetic and if it gets too close, it'll jump to it. So that's the reason why it's not centered. Okay, now that I've placed my dot, uh, it's this is a big bite. I'm at three, three sixteenths of a hole. You can use a hole punch as well. Uh, whatever's available to you. There you go. Oh, let's see. Where is it? So for the loop, you have this little metal piece. You're just going to hold it flat with the loop elastic against the metal. And you'll go through the hole and you pull it out and then lay it flat. So when you pull it through, there you go. Oh, oh that's twisted. Now we're ready to mat the rest of the pages. So we'll go ahead and cut our mats and 
and as we place them I'll tell you where the magnets go. Our mats are going to be six and a half by four and a half. So you want to just grab your sheets of paper that you have and cut them all out. I'm not going to record that part. So um, again, six and a half by four and a half. Pay attention to how the pattern goes. If there's words, so it's going to be um, six and a half long, four and a half short. So when I come back, I'll have all these cut. So we need um, 11 mats at six and a half by four and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use one fourth corner chomper from We Are Memory Keepers and crop the corners of all four of them. And I'm going to ink the edges. And you'll do this to all 11 mats. And I'm going to tape my mats. Um, you can use whatever adhesive you like or just use the ATG. But I like to tape my, uh, use tape for the edges and then swipe the middle with ATG. It really depends on the type of project that I'm using, but this is most likely going to be a gift, so I want it to stick. There we go. Now, that was my sample, but I've already made all of my mats. Now, before we attach them, we're going to finish placing the magnets. So I need two more magnets, the half inch magnets. And we are going to uh, flip down just one of the flaps down and lay it and it should stick if you use the uh, the basic gray ones you'll have the sticker on top if not just cut a piece of tape cut a piece of tape and put it on there uh, two-sided tape I'm going to remove the tape backing, place it on there, and then fold this shut. Give it a good rub. There's my placement. I'm going to put a piece of tape over that to secure it. This is technically an extra precaution. It's, it might not be needed, but I like to, to add it. And then the last magnet is going to go on the very front page, just like that. This one's a little more tricky since it's uh, taped side down, but I trust the magnets. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and tape that piece too. If you don't want to trust the magnets, then, you know, just put your own... Put it down and then just put a piece of tape down and don't take off the tape backing or use a different magnet that was I think a plus and maybe a negative would work. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and put map my pages 
So it's going to be uh, one eighth of an inch all the way around, just like that. Get my ATG ready. And take the tape backing off the magnet. I tend to always get my mats crooked, so this one's pretty good. I always have one in the bunch crooked though. Moving on to my next one. This is moving pretty quickly. We already got half of it matted. There we go. All right. I'm going to clean up a little of my mess over in this corner. Okay. I'm going to back, uh, mat the other side. Make sure I'm having my clock piece facing the right direction. Don't want my clocks upside down. There we go.
three more mats. Then we're going to go take the backing off the magnet piece. mats are done you can go ahead and um, either press down with them on your fingers to make sure that they get a good stick or run your bone folder over them either way There we go. Move on to matting that and getting, uh, this also has magnets in it for the purpose of when it's closed and turned upside down that the tags don't fall out. All right. All right, so get your paper that you want for the top pocket and that mat is going to be Six and a half by four. Let me verify that. Six and a half by four. There we go. to the corners. And before I eat the edges, I'm going to do my thumb notch, which is um, two and one fourth inch circle is what I'm using. Where's my pencil? Okay. Going to find my center. And then mark one and one eighth on both sides. Is that right? That's right. Is that centered? Just didn't look centered. Okay, I'm gonna go run this. I'll be right back.
All right, I did a guess on how far down that goes, so let's see if I'm right. Um, wrong side. Oh, I don't look bad. I'm gonna go stick with it. Paint the edges. Tape it. And before I attach, I'm going to go, um, not go, uh, attach my magnets to the page first, the pocket. Those magnets are one and one fourth inch and not the half inch. Um, the thumb notch is in an arch, so I'm going to use glue for that and not tape. It'll be easier. All right, let's get our little magnets out. Far down, I placed them. Let's see. I'm just gonna measure from where it is on the other album. I think it's only three eighths of an inch down. So we're gonna place it three eighths of an inch down, and you can't see that. Um, I need a tape set on the back so for the inside piece. So it's going to be taped side up on this piece. Go ahead and mark it three eighths of an inch down. Place it there. Get my tape. Alright, the reason why I did it that way is because I needed the inside piece to not have to have a piece of tape on it. So it sticks on the inside. Oops. And then when that backing's off, we're just gonna close it and rub it on there. So again, the piece, just drop it in there and it sticks right on in there. So let's take off the backing. not perfectly centered but that is all right so I got it stuck in there I'm gonna close it and there it is on the other side where I need it I'm gonna go ahead and put a piece of tape on that one too oh, I might not need it that big actually I'm gonna hold off on the tape what I did with the other one, instead of tape, I actually used a sticker from the paper collection. Can you see that? So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Go get my stickers, hold on. I 
here are the stickers that come with the collection. And I think I'm going to use this little guy right here. Oops. Oh, that's not what that's not what I want. Let's not stick to my table. There we go. Not a creature is stirring. I'm going to go ahead and eat the edge of that. Let's see if that's big enough for the magnet though. Yeah. It'll work. I probably need a bigger sticker now that I think about it. I think I will. I'm not going to chance it. I'm going to go ahead and give this big holly. I like to change my mind a lot. No biggie. You can change it until stuff is stuck down and taped. And then if you don't like it, just cover it up. Alright, so there's my holly all inked. And then I can have the holly in the middle. Except until I drop it. That wasn't smart. Does that look good? Does that look good? Yeah. Oh, it's crooked. Get my trusty tweezers. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. So there's my sticker. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and move on and attach this mat. backing from my magnet. Add a little bit more adhesive. And don't forget the glue. I almost forgot the glue. Get my glue. And the lid stuck to it. Just trying to unplug my glue. I should keep my pen in there, but I tend to forget. Let's see if that worked. All right. All right. I'm going to go ahead and add glue around, oh come on now, around the lip, and of course, always have to get too much, because if it came out right, well, that would just be impressive. Okay, I'm going to attach, does that look good, does that, does that look good? That, look, that looks good. All right. That looks good. Find my magnet. Get it to be attached. There we go. I didn't want this, the little magnet, any lower because it'll affect the magnet in here. And uh, so it is rather close to the edge of the paper line, but. As long as you get it stuck down real good, you're not going to have a problem. Yeah, it's not sticking. Good. Alright. Uh, now we have some uh, two tags to make for the top up here. So, let's get that paper out. It's going to be, you want two six and a half by four and a half tags. So let me cut 
cut this at six and a half because this, uh, the Procision Fiskars folds right in the middle. It's sitting at the six inch line, but sometimes I like to measure at six and a half just in case I got it right. Okay. Six and a half, what did I say? Six and a half by four and a half? Yep. Not two of those. Four and a half. Four and a half. And before I put this away, I'm going to go ahead and cut my mats for these. And the mats are going to be six and one fourth by four and one fourth. What did I, I said six and one fourth. I'm definitely going to measure my six and one fourth. Four and one fourth. Okay, there's one. I mean, the precision works great. Paper and chipboard. That's the only problem is that line with the measurements sitting right there. And it's like the most used measurement is six inches, and that's where it's off. So I tend to measure between five and a half to six and a half to be safe. Okay. Let's go ahead and I'm going to corner these. all the pieces. Then we're going to add our tape. ATG down. Move the tape. 
landscape backing. Oops. Let go. There we go. Fingers getting stuck in the adhesive. There we go. All right. Here's my two mats. We're going to unmagnet that. There we go. Slide it right on down. kind of plain for me so I want to add a little to it and then we have the front cover to do. I think I'm gonna grab these stickers here. I love this sticker. This is the Santa Claus of the reindeer. I think I wanna nothing fancy just place it right on in the middle. I'm gonna go ahead and eat the edges of it. Just ink in the edges of the sticker. Oops. All right. I'm not good at centering. I'm going to use my roller. <laughs> but before I put it down, do I want to add? I like the hollies, but I also like this. Let's see. Look good or the hops. Let's check. Let's see. I think the holly is the winner. Just put this down a little bit lower. Um, seems about center. Bound to get something crooked, right? How's that? Is that crooked? That don't look crooked. I think I did it. All right. Get this. There's two Holly stickers. Center. <laughs> you can't answer me back. Oh, it's good. Let's try this one. Do I have to have it centered? I have to have it match with the other one. Hmm. Now I made a face. <laughs> I like it. Okay. Let's finish this front cover real quick. Lay it flat to make it a little bit easier for me. I already got some pieces cut. Alright, I did not fussy cut these. Uh, I think I said that in the beginning of the video. I used my circle dies. Love my nesting circle dies. Okay. So I still need to cut this down. So 
to, what is that, six, seven inches. Cut that. Yep, that's not that smart. There we go. That's good. There we go. Something like that. I like that. Okay. Let's eat the edges of all these pieces. With circles, we're going to add tape and glue. Go ahead and take the back of my strip first. Do like a plus sign with circles and then use glue around the edges. Plus sign. Well, plus sign. I think I showed you an X. Oops. See where I want to put this. Yep, that looks good. I'm just using the dots as a guide. I'm hoping the dots are straight. That look good? Let's see. So I attached that a half an inch up from the edge. Okay. Then we're going to put Santa. Mm 
And again, I'm just going to go ahead and use the glue on the edges. drop things when they have glue on them. I'm not sure if I said that this, but this album does hold all of its for uh, four by six pictures. There we go. One more, and then we're done. That looks good. I like how this one turned out. And that's our Christmas version. So that was pretty quick. Quick and easy. One Christmas version, one pet version. If you need a written tutorial, I put that on my blog. It's at www.webofcreativity.net. I put it up as a post so it's free with all the uh, measurements. If you want a written version down, of course. And uh, more projects like this on my blog as well. And that's it. So if you want to make a couple for Christmas presents, Use any paper collection you want. Quick, fast, and easy. Thank you for watching.